have some more quilt spaces. So I have this fall leaf one, which I've done a video on on how to make this quilt. Um, and then I have a log cabin one and I'm calling this fall as well because it's this Layla Boutique fabric and it is fall to me. So I made this one earlier this year and then this one not long ago, but these are basted and ready to be quilted. So I have my baby lock sewing machine set up here. I'm planning on doing straight line quilting on this one. And then um, I'll bring my Juki out and I will probably do a stipple. Well, not a stipple. I'll probably do a meander, a loose meander on this log cabin. So I want to share that with you guys and take you along on my quilting process because I do quilt my own quilts at home so that I can save a little bit of money. Um, okay, so I'm going to get started. So I like to make sure my bobbin thread is up and I like to start in the batting when I am quilting a quilt. So let me show you, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's see if you can, I think you can see. So my um, foot is in the batting and I just take a few back stitches. So here's the plan. I'm just going to have the presser foot follow the edge of my quilt. And as I come upon a pin, you can see the pin here, I will take it out. And here we go. And I guess I should say, after I changed my settings, the 4.0 stitch length, I kind of messed with my tension a little bit too up here. I guess you can't really see that. Um, I did some test stitches on a scrap of fabric to make sure I liked how everything was looking. I actually think this flannel back, um, I shared that this is a flannel backing fabric that I picked up not long ago for this fall leaf quilt. Um, I think the flannel backing will really kind of help everything stay in place as well. And the reason why I say that is because it kind of, it's not as slippery, I feel like, as like a cotton. I think it kind of acts as, you know, I don't know. So I'm gonna go like this, and then I hold this up and look at my stitches. How does everything look? Yep, I think everything looks really nice. How does the back look? I don't wanna get my head in the camera, but just flipping it over, I think everything looks really nice. So, I just keep on sewing down here. And I come to a pin and I remove it. And sometimes I just go ahead and remove the pin down here, but since this is the edge, I kind of don't want to. Okay, I have to show, I sewed, whoops, these two lines, um, stitch lines, I guess, rows with you guys. And I sewed <laughs> another row all the way down here. And I was like, oh, my bobbin ran out. And my top thread came unthreaded. So guess what? I'm feeling like these are too close together. So I think I'm just gonna stop where I am, come over here and I'm just gonna sew um, a quarter inch or even a little bit more with the presser foot. I'll put my presser foot on this seam here and sew a stitch line there. Maybe put my presser foot on the other side. Let's see. I'll put my presser foot here and sew. So there'll be like a stitch line going right here. I'll put my presser foot on this side and there'll be a stitch line. So there'll be like two stitch lines going down and then I'll go back and do it on the other side and I'll make like a cross hatch pattern. And I think that's what I'll do. And then, um, when I'm done with that, I can come back and fill in if I want to add more um, stitch rows. But these are too close and I felt like once I figured out that that row, that third row didn't sew, because I felt like if the third row was there, I would be committed and I'd have to do all these rows. But since that one didn't sew, maybe that was a blessing and now I'm not going to do this pattern. I'm just going to carry on and just do more. And again, over here, when I put that binding on, it's going to come right here. So you'll see those two rows, but then everything else will be consistent. So I'm okay with that. And I might even just do that on the very end as well. Like do these, do this, what, what this looks like here, do identical on the end of the quilt or the other side of the quilt, because I can't remember if this is a, the side or the top or bottom. I can't remember. So I'm just going to do some sewing and I'll be back and show you my progress. I finished quilting one direction on my fall leaf quilt. So this is the back. Here's the front.
You can see the quilting there. I'm back at my sewing machine to do the other side of this um, fall leaf quilt, this straight line quilting on this quilt. So again, I have my walking foot on. I do always wonder if you can hear me over the sewing machine. But I just sew a little bit and then I stop for a second and shuffle things around. To continue oops I think I kind of pulled on that I think I'm going to continue quilting I am going to continue sorry I'm going to continue quilting this quilt and I will come back when it's all done but I think it's looking really cute where you can see the kind of the grid pattern anyway I think it's turning out really nice so let me finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like all right you guys I got all the straight line quilting done on this fall leaf quilt what do you guys think I think it's so cute um I really like how it turned out and I like, here's a fuzzy. I like um, just the simplicity of it. And I also feel like it's going to drape really nice. Um, yeah, so I just use white thread so it does kind of stand out. But um, I need to just trim it up and add some binding. Okay, so there's the back quilting. So that's what it looks like. And I have a finish. I finished all the binding. So this quilt is 100% done. And I'm super excited to snuggle with it because the backing is flannel and it's going to be so snuggly. And I just did the straight line quilting on it and I am loving how it looks. I have this Jelly Roll Log Cabin fall quilt all pin basted. And so I decided I'm going to do an all over meander on it. And so I started quilting on this quilt and all over meander and I'm doing it fairly loose because I don't want it to be really tight. Um, I want it to be drapey. And so I just started quilting and I usually, I, I will quilt like this way, this direction all the way down the quilt. And then I'll stop, cut my thread and then come back to this beginning point and then go that way again. And what I do is I start my thread in the batting if I can. And I just remove pins as I go. So I just have my little pin dish. I just take these pins out. If you can see the safety pins here, I just take them out as I go. But hopefully I got you all zoomed in pretty good. And here we go. So I try to stop and then reposition my fabric so that it's all smooth. Um, and hopefully you can see that quilting. I tried to, let me see how the camera looks. I tried to zoom in. I think it's kind of hard. Whoops, and the camera's kind of shaking. So if you feel like the camera's shaking, it is, okay. So I did zoom in. Let me see. Okay, I'll zoom in. Maybe I'll do that for you guys. Zoom in a little bit closer. I'm not sure <laughs> you guys if you if you like the quilting and everything maybe comment and let me know um I know I keep trying different angles I keep trying different ways um I don't have a way to like mount my camera like above my sewing machine so I know this is kind of coming in at, at an angle um but I'll just keep quilting um and showing some as I go as I look beyond here I see a pin so I'm just reaching through to unpin that I always want to make sure that my backing fabric is not tucked up under there because it will get sewed to the back and then I'll have to seam rip.
sometimes I'll take pins and I'll pin this backing fabric too. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. So everything's looking good. Sometimes I flip this and I check to look at my stitches on the back and I do like how everything looks. Um, I'm just trying to go slow and this quilt is pretty large. So um, I anticipate it will take me hours, probably three hours, but I do hope I can get it done today as far as the quilting goes. And I'm just doing a loose, um, a loose meander because I feel like it does go faster when you do this versus something tight. And then I also like the, the drape that it adds to the quilt. And I just try to go nice and slow around the curve if I'm as I'm doing the circular motion, I try to just make it smooth so that it doesn't end up jagged. There are times that it's ended up jagged and then I just come back in with my seam ripper. But I'm gonna stop here and make sure. I kind of feel like this fabric could get caught, so I'm just going to pin it to my batting up here a little bit. Um, <clears throat> And then as I go to the edge, I will go off into the batting and come back on. That way, not all, not the entire edge looks the same with my starting and stopping design. But yeah, I was saying this is going to be a large quilt. Um, I can't be sure. I'm trying to think when I measure the batting. I want to say it was like 89, maybe 86. By something. So I'm going to stop because there's a pin right here behind this um, foot here. And then there's another one coming up here. And then I kind of just pull my quilt and shift it as needed. Okay, I'm going to look at this design. Sometimes I take a minute and I look to see how my design looks to see if I'm consistent. I'm curious if any of you own a free or a, a long arm quilting machine. Does anybody own a long arm quilting machine? I'd love to know. I'd also like to know if you love it and if you do quilting as a business or if you just got if you just have the quilting machine for yourself for your hobby. Anyway, I'd be curious to know what you guys do as far as quilting goes. I'm coming up on a pin, so I'm just going to remove that. almost crossed my stitches but I caught myself just in time so I can feel this quilt coming my way oh I still have a long ways to go oh my goodness
Okay, it's the next day and I finished quilting my fall log cabin quilt. I added a border to this quilt and I used two jelly rolls to make all of the log cabin blocks and then I added a border. Um, I quilted it with an all over meander. It's really loose because I wanted it to drape well. Okay, so here's the back. I pieced the back using some fabric scraps I had on hand so I didn't have to buy backing fabric and I pieced the binding as well. So I took leftover strips from these two jelly rolls and made the binding. So I'm trying to use up what I have, um, but I really love how this quilt turned out and I'm excited that it's almost finished. It's a huge quilt too. It's a, almost a queen size. All right, so next up is binding this quilt. I'm super excited to almost be done with this. And my log cabin quilt is all quilted up and the binding is done. It is such a big quilt. I love it so much. It's so, so pretty. Mm -hmm. 